Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. So I can see more people coming in. Hello, hello. So welcome to our From Students to Students webinar, STEM's Fun webinar. Let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Jian Wong. I am 14 years old and I am from SM All Saints. I will be your moderator for today. It is my pleasure to be invited to, be, to moderate this event. For your information, this webinar is a student-based program. What does it mean? It means that this program is not run by any officials or any uh, educators, but us students instead. So I would like to thank every one of you for joining us today. To inaugurate this event, I would like to invite Ustaz Muhammad Fazli bin Zainal from SMK Bandarai Kota Kinabalu to do the opening prayer. Ustaz, the stage is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh Ila hadratin Nabi Mustafa Rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam Wa ala alihi wa ashabil kiram al-fatihah A'uzu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Ar-Rahmanirrahim Malik yawmiddin Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim Ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim Waladdallin Amin Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi al-lazhi bin'amatihi Tatimmu al-salihat Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulina al-amin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق والناصر الحق بالحق والحاد إلى سراتك المستقيم وعلى آله وصحبه حق قدره ومقداره العظيم يا الله يا تهن كمي كمي ممن جد كن رسك شكرا كبدا مو يا الله كرنا مغزين كن كمي انتو بردا دالم مجلس Program webinar bilangan pertama 2021 STEM is fun from student to student pada hari yang barakah ini Ya Allah, Ya fa'alu lima yurid Kami memohon kepadamu agar engkau berkatilah majlis ini Dengan limpahan rahmat dan berkatmu Semoga segala usaha kami dalam menjayakan majlis ini Mendapat keredoan dan hidayahmu Di saat ini juga kami ingin merafakkan tangan kehambaan demi mengharapkan ihsanmu agar engkau tanamkanlah kecintaan dalam diri kami dan juga anak murid kami supaya terus istiqamah untuk menimba ilmumu yang sangat luas. Engkau anugerahkanlah ilmu yang bermanfaat kepada kami semua dan semudah-mudahan dengannya kami mampu mengamalkan ilmumu seterusnya dapat mendekatkan diri kepadamu Ya Allah. Ya Allah. Ya Wani Ya Hamid Wahai Tuhan yang maha melimpahkan kerahmatannya Kami pohon agar aktiviti-aktiviti yang terangkum dalam program STEM is STEM ini Mampu membibit rasa kecintaan kami kepadamu Kami pohon agar program yang dijalankan ini Akan menjadikan diri kami untuk lebih bersemangat Menimba ilmu melalui amalan membaca Seperti mana yang diperintahkan olehmu Ya Allah Ya Allah, Ya Mudabbirul Amri Limpahilah hati kami dengan nur hidayahmu Dan bantulah kami menjadi generasi yang mencintai agama Kemudian menegakkan syariatnya Generasi yang mencintai bangsa Lalu memelihara kehormatannya Generasi yang mencintai negara Lalu mempertahankan kedaulatannya Seterusnya, bantulah kami menjadi generasi yang cemerlang Di dunia dan di akhirat اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرهوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل اللهم فينا ولا معنا ولا من يتبعنا الشكيا ولا مترودا ولا محرونا اللهم اجعل خير أعمالنا آهره وخير أعمالنا حواتمه وخير أيامنا يوم القاك فيه 
ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار سبحانك ربك رب العزة عما يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين Thank you, Ustad. Let us proceed. Hello, my name is Krishma Sharma, a 14-year-old student from SMO Saints as well. Today, alongside Jian Wong, I will be your co-moderator for today's event. It is an honor and a great pleasure to be able to be here with you guys live on YouTube. On behalf of PPD Kota Kinabalu, we would like to thank everyone for joining this program, and we hope that you benefit yourself via this webinar. We are very privileged today as we are joined by a lot of distinguished guests. Hence, I would like to take this moment to introduce our panel of guests for today. Today, we have Puan Tanya Haji Jaman, our Pegawai Pendidikan Daerah joining us as our officiating guest. We are also very privileged to have Dr. Mary Gambidaw, the Principal of SM All Saints, and Puan Rohani Haji Ramli, the Principal of SMK Bandaraya, Kota Kinabalu. We also have Mr. Andrew Chong, the headmaster of SJKT St. James Court Kinabalu, and also Madam Dora Loy Siu Chiu, the headmistress of St. Francis Convent Primary School. Glad to have you guys joining us today on this joyous event. Ladies and gentlemen, a quick note to all that e-certificates will be provided after the event ends. So stick around and stay tuned in with us. So just a gentle reminder before we start, you are welcome to ask any questions. Yes, any questions during the Q&A session later. But please bear in mind that we do not toler tolerate any toxic behavior or any vulgar language over here. Take note that spamming unrelated stuff in the chat box is strictly prohibited and serious action will be taken to those who fail to abide the rules. We apologize in advance if we are not able to answer your questions but we will definitely try our best to inform the presenters later to answer your questions. Now, before we start or we go any further, I would like to invite Madam Tanya Haji Jaman, our Pegawai Pendidikan Daerah, to give a welcome speech. Madam Tanya, the platform is yours. Okay, terima kasih banyak ya. Yeah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrofil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi washabbihi ajmain. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wahlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera. Salam PPD Kota Kinabalu Day to Change. Salam Sabah hebat. Katakan tidak kepada nombor 16 dan katakan iya kepada 10 terbaik. Sabah Maju Jaya. Yang berusaha, Puan Dorin Peter Lyson, Timbalan Sektor Pembelajaran, uh, PPD Kota Kinabalu, yang berbahagia Dr. Mary Gambidau, Pengetua SM All Sense Kota Kinabalu, yang berbahagia Puan Rohani Haji Ramli, Pengetua SMK Bandaraya Kota Kinabalu, Encik Andrew Chong, Guru Besar SJKC St. James Kota Kinabalu, Puan Dora Loy Siu Chu, Guru Besar uh, S Saint Francis Convent, Puan Elsie Sharon Gilok, Pengerusi Pelaksana Webinar yang juga merupakan SISC PPD Kota Kinabalu, Puan Susan Chin Shukman Men, uh, Guru Guru Kanan Mata Pelajaran uh, Bidang Matematik dan Sains SM All Saint, uh, Puan Nadia Richard, uh, Guru Penyelaras STEM SMK Bandar Raya. Dr. Lily Chin Muiken, uh, San Francisco Convent, SK San Francisco Convent, PPD Kota Kinabalu. Anak-anak yang terlibat pada hari ini, ya, yeah, sama ada dalam konti kita sekarang ini, ataupun yang berada di uh, apa tu online, ya, yeah, Maya, uh, para guru, para ibu bapa, anak-anak pelajar, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan yang dapat bersama-sama kita pada petang ini. Pertama kita panjatkan setinggi-tinggi kesyukuran kita kehadrat ilahi atas limpah dan kurnianya kita dapat bersama-sama eh, pada majlis uh, perasmian eh, dalam majlis perasmian webinar STEM is fun 
from students to students PPD Kota Kinabalu. Saya percaya webinar STEM yang pertama kali kita laksanakan ini sangat memberikan makna uh, khususnya kepada guru-guru ya dan juga murid-murid di seluruh PPD Kota Kinabalu dan juga di seluruh negeri Sabah sesiapapun yang dapat mengikuti webinar kita pada petang ini ya dengan kehadiran anak-anak cilik yang begitu ber uh, berbakat dan bersemangat ya uh, webinar STEM is fun from student to students dianjurkan secara kolaboratif ya uh, di antara um, sektor pembelajaran PPD Kota Kinabalu dengan kerjasama empat buah sekolah untuk memberi kesedaran kepada seluruh warga pendidikan ya, tentang kepentingan pembudayaan PDP STEM di dalam kalangan uh, murid-murid kita ya walaupun dalam tempoh pandemik COVID-19 ini ya. Uh, pendidikan STEM merupakan pengintegrasian sains, ya, teknologi, kejuruteraan dan matematik. Saya fikir benda-benda ni kita sediak maklum ya. Uh, sebagai satu kaedah uh, pengajaran dan pembelajaran yang lebih menarik dan menyeronokkan. Jadi pendidikan STEM adalah sangat penting kerana ianya meliputi aspek kehidupan harian eh, dan berkaitan dengan dunia di sekeliling kita. So dia sangat relevan ya. Anak-anak sidang hadirin yang saya hormati sekalian. Pengetahuan STEM uh, diguna pakai dalam penyelesaian masalah seperti pembinaan robot, pengiraan diskaun, ketika pembelian barang yang mana melibatkan ramai pengguna, contoh di Shopee ya, agak popular pada masa ini. Selain itu pengetahuan STEM adalah amat penting sebagai um, persediaan anak-anak kita ya uh, menghadapi uh, masa depan yang penuh cabaran. Cabaran masa depan kita sekarang ini adalah berbeza uh, berbanding dengan zaman kita dulu ataupun zaman ibu bapa, zaman guru-guru kita ya yang ada sekarang ini. So anak-anak kita, generasi muda ini, anak-anak yang sedang berada di talian ini akan berhadapan dengan pelbagai cabaran yang um, dia tidak menentu. Ya? Dia tidak menentu dan memerlukan satu um, persiapan, penanggapan yang apa, anak-anak perlu menyediakan diri dengan um, dengan uh, persiapan yang mantap. Ya? Jadi uh, dalam keadaan ini, ya, um, kita perlu menyediakan anak-anak dengan kecerdasan batan seperti pekerja robot, kenderaan tanpa pemandu. Nah, siapa yang akan terlibat dengan hal-hal seperti ini? Ya, tidak lain dan tidak bukan adalah generasi kita sekarang ini, anak-anak yang sekarang sedang menonton, ya, anak-anak yang sedang berada di konti, anak-anak yang sedang berada di sekolah dan di mana-mana pun juga. Nah, andalah semua yang akan uh, meneroka masa depan ini ya, dengan lebih baik. Tetapi arkitiknya adalah guru-guru yang ada sekarang ini, orang dewasa yang membentuk anak-anak ini ataupun yang menyediakan pendidikan ini dengan lebih baik dan dapat diterima oleh anak-anak kita. Menjadi menjadi sebab seperti uh, webinar kita pada hari ini, STEM is fun. So inilah yang ingin kita capai, anak-anak suka belajar STEM ya yeah, dalam situasi kita sekarang ini agak sukar, kita tidak berhadapan. Tetapi saya yakin dengan kesedaran yang baik dengan pendekatan yang baik guru-guru kita mampu memberikan yang terbaik kepada anak-anak kita yang sedang um, mengikuti ataupun yang berada di bilik-bilik darjah tidak kira lah bilik darjah yang empat penjuru itu ataupun di uh, alam maya sekarang ini ya. baik tentu nak puan-puan apa yang kita buat ini bila kita meng- menggerakkan pendidikan STEM ini kita tidak bertentangan bahkan kita selari dengan uh, plan pembangunan pendidikan Malaysia ya, yang telah pun berlangsung since 2013 sehinggalah 2025. Nanti bukan lama lagi now kita berada dalam 2021. Dan STEM yang dimaksudkan yang ada di dalam plan pembangunan kita adalah uh, memberi penek- memang memberi penekanan kepada STEM ya dengan um, agenda penting dalam pendidikan iaitu transformasi dalam pendidikan menyediakan generasi muda untuk menghadapi cabaran abad ke-21. Jadi agak jelas di situ. Objektif asas sistem pendidikan adalah untuk memastikan bahawa setiap pelajar dilengkapi dengan pengetahuan dan kemahiran yang diperlukan untuk kejayaan dalam kehidupan. Yang lebih praktikal, yang lebih bermakna, yang uh, mereka berada dalam lingkungan yang mereka akan buat 
dalam kehidupan seharian itulah STEM ya. Baik, um, jadi objektif asas sistem pendidikan adalah untuk memastikan bahawa anak-anak uh, uh, ya dilengkapi dengan pengetahuan dan kemahiran yang uh, diperlukan untuk kejayaan dan juga untuk uh, keberlangsungan hidup pada masa akan datang. Namun begitu uh, kalau kita tengok ya um, sekarang ini uh, di dalam situasi kita penuh dengan cabaran dan sebenarnya kalau dalam keadaan ini kalau sebelum-sebelum ini ya uh, kalau dulu-dulu dengan ke keperluan asas dia 3M pun memadai untuk anak-anak kita uh, kerana mereka meneroka dalam ruang lingkup yang tidak terlalu uh, rigid seperti sekarang ini tidak terlalu isunya tidak berapa meruncing Uh, mereka boleh mencari nafkah hidup dan sebagainya. Tetapi situasi ini berbeza ya. Jadi anak-anak, guru-guru dan semua yang hadir ini perlu tahu tentang itu. Kita sedang berhadapan dengan uh, situasi yang yang pelbagai ini. Baik, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan yang dikasihi sekalian. Uh, kembali kepada kepada apa yang kita um, buat pada hari ini ya. Um, kita tahu ya ibu bapa pun sebenarnya sedang berhadapan dengan pelbagai isu dan cabaran sendiri ya. Um, misalnya uh, ibu bapa pun dia tidak tenang dalam situasi sekarang terutamanya dalam suasana PDPR. Ya, selalu menimbulkan soalan-soalan apakah yang dipelajari di sekolah sekarang, adakah ianya relevan dengan kerjaya anak saya, adakah dia berkaitan dengan realiti kehidupan masa hadapan, apakah penglibatan anak saya dalam aktiviti STEM ini membantu uh, melahirkan pakar dalam bidang STEM pada masa akan datang, adakah dia berkaitan dengan kepentingan negara dan banyak lagi. Jadi uh, kerana itu uh, kita adakan webinar ini, kita nak bedahkan ataupun kita nak tunjukkan betapa anak-anak muda kita ini ya yeah, dapat um, diketengahkan ataupun mereka boleh bercakap tentang isu mereka sendiri dan bagaimana dia dikaitkan dengan uh, keadaan mereka di bilik darjah apakah yang mereka mahu tentang uh, STEM ini pada masa akan datang dan banyak lagi yang akan kita terokai dalam webinar kita pada kali ini Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, terima kasih banyak. Saya suka merakamkan ucapan terima kasih yang tidak terhingga kepada anak-anak yang terlibat pada hari ini, guru-guru, pegawai-pegawai, ya, khususnya para pengetua yang membenarkan anak-anak pelajar dan berkolaborasi dengan PPD Kota Kinabalu pada petang ini. Uh, terima kasih sekali lagi, ya, terima kasih banyak-banyak SMK Bandar Raya, SM St. James, SJKC St. James, uh, SK San Francisco Convent, Olsen ya, yang telah bersama-sama membentuk dan melahirkan wakil murid kita yang hebat dan berkeyakinan. Baru permulaan pun saya nampak betapa anak-anak kita mempunyai keyakinan yang begitu baik. Ya, Ini bertaraf global. Ya, wajarlah juga kita gunakan YouTube ini. So rakan-rakan yang lain boleh tengok betapa anak-anak uh, yang yang petang ini melibatkan diri ya. uh, mereka bukan calang-calang. Mereka berjaya menghadapi cabaran berhadapan secara online ini dan nantinya kita akan melihat mereka bagaimana mereka memperkatakan tentang STEM. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekali lagi syabas dan tahniah ya kepada semua yang terlibat. Akhir kata dengan lafaz bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Saya merasmikan webinar STEM is fun from students to students pada petang ini ya. Mudah-mudahan ia berjalan dengan lancar. Sekian wabillahi taufik wal hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih. Thank you, Puan Tanya, for your motivating advice. So without any further ado, we shall start this webinar.
as the events kickstart, let me invite a three-person hybrid group. Yes, you heard it right. Three-person hybrid group. Um, we have two students from SM All Saints. They are Nathaniel Santana and Akiko Ryan Samuel, and also Ryan Ong Jun Lei from SJKC St. James to present their walking robot project. For your information, this hybrid group represented Malaysia in the World Innovative Science Fair organized by Indonesian Science Society and managed to grab gold award for the technology and computer category and also the second grand award. So without any further ado, let me invite them and let's learn from them. As of all things, take it away. Uh, yes, thank you, Jen. Uh, hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Good afternoon. I am Aki Karoin. I am a Form 2 student from SM All Saints. Uh, I'm here to present our group project, the simple and inexpensive walking robot. The problem is that robots are getting more sophisticated as technology advances. Due to the high manufacturing costs, these robots are also very expensive. Our objective is to create a robot that is simple enough to make at home with minimal equipment, which also makes it affordable to most people. The novelty and uniqueness of our robot. The robot we made has a very simple mechanism. Its sleek and flat body allows it to fit even into the tightest spaces. Each leg of the robot can be individually remotely controlled, allowing more precise movements. Extra gadgets can also be added onto the robot, like headlights, cameras, and heat sensors, making it very versatile and adaptive to any situation. Materials of the robot can be easily found anywhere, like salvage from old electrical appliances and recycled items for the body, making it affordable to most, if not all, people. The application and benefits of our robot. It can help search and rescue teams locate survivors trapped between rubble in the aftermath of a disaster, like, uh, for example, earthquakes or um, in tsunamis. It can also inspect tight spaces, again, like in rubble. It can also scout out hazardous environments from a safe distance, such as bomb sites. Uh, it can also be used for leisure because it's an affordable walking robot. It's good. It's fun. Who doesn't want one? So this is a picture of our robot, the anatomy of our robot. As you can see, we used a lot of affordable, cheap materials. Uh, even if you don't, you can't, you don't buy this these materials in stores. It's very likely you have them lying around your your house, like popsicle sticks, wooden skewers aluminum sheets and um, metal spacers. Uh, batteries are, of course, we have them everywhere. Everything around us operates with a battery. Uh, we have battery caps, uh, motors from um, past RBT project I've personally done. Um, we have a circuit board and a switch. Uh, we only submitted this project to one competition, which is the World Innovative Science Fair which took place um, in July, yeah, around July. And we got uh, the gold award in the technology and computer section for second year school. And we also got the overall second grand award. Um, this is a very big achievement for us since it's our first project together. And this is also the first competition we've sent it to. It gave our morale a very well-needed boost, and we are looking to add more features and to participate in other competitions. That's the end of my presentation. Now I'll give it. I'll give the stage to Nathaniel. Hi everyone. Today I will be presenting the showcase of the simple and inexpensive robot. Mr. Ghazali, is it okay if you can help me present? I have my screen ready. Okay, good. Okay. 
First of all, I will present this brief video of the building montage. And now for the video, a short video of the robot itself. So now I will explain the main parts of the robot using human analogy. First up is the brain, which is the circuit board. Like the brain that processes information, the circuit board receives input signals from the remote controller and processes it, processes it in the microchips. Then it sends out output signals to the motors. Second is the muscles, which are the motor, which are the motors. And like organic muscles that convert chemical energy into kinetic energy, the motors convert electric energy into kinetic energy. And they also include a gearbox to reduce the speed and increase the torque coming from the motors. Third is the heart, which is the battery. Like the heart that supplies nutrients to the body cells through blood vessels, the battery supplies electric energy to the circuit board and motors of the robot through wires. And the final part of the body, which is the chassis, like a body that protects the internal organs and converts mechanical motion from the muscles into useful work, the chassis protects the electronics inside and converts mechanical motion from the motors into useful work. However, I, had, I was inexperienced and soon realized that the high voltage from the 9 volt battery overloaded one of the electronic components on the circuit board, but I could not take the circuit board out to repair it without damaging the robot. So we did some research, and here are some of the future improvements we came up with for the second version of this robot for now. First of all, MOSFETs are basically transistors for a high voltage, and we will use them to switch the high voltage circuit from the motors with a lower voltage signal from the circuit board. Second, the LEDs from this broken torch, which we will mount on the robot to brighten up dark spaces, and also to know the position and direction of the robot in the dark. And third is this magnetic tape, which we will stick on the parameter of the robot to give it the ability to cling and move on ferromagnetic surfaces. But of course, we might think of other improvements to add later. That's all for me, and thank you for listening. Thank you, SMO Saints, for the wonderful presentation. I'm sure that we can learn so many different things from you guys. Now, Jin, on to you. All right. Um, so before I open the questions, I, op I open the floor to the audiences. I actually have two questions for uh, Artiko and Ryan. So first of all, I would like to uh, ask, I believe that you guys face some huge obstacles in making this project a very successful hit. So I would like to ask um, Akiko, can you um, explain the difficulties you guys face during this project making process? Uh, of course, Jen. So first of all, because of our current situation, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic, right? where we were not able to um, meet each other. And that made it very hard for us to brainstorm and actually come up with an idea. And this also meant that um, only one of us had the, had to do the project, the actual robot. And it's way harder that way because normally, normally what we would do is 
we compile all our resources, like say, for example, I have a lot of popsicle sticks and Nathaniel has um, batteries and Ryan has the electrical equipment. So normally what we would do is we um, we meet up after school and we bring all our resources together and to make it together. But uh, because of, again, because of the pandemic, this is not possible. So we only had Nathaniel to do it alone, which I'm very grateful for. And also um, me and Ryan, we, were, we just had to um, support him from the back, you know, like make the presentations and make sure that the, our script and for the, the judging sessions, yeah, we just had to make sure that those were all right. Yeah. Back to you, Jin. I mean, it really makes sense that since pandemic maka and MC or you can't go anywhere. So it's pretty tough when it comes to project communication. There is a lot of obstacles. All right. Thank you, Kiko. So my a final question from me to this group is uh I would like to ask Ryan. Editing is a complex a uh, complex skill and I believe not everybody can process it. So I would like to ask uh, you. How and where did you learn your editing skills from? Mind explaining? Well, I learned my editing skills from YouTube, you know, a really big platform from Google and testing out many other features from my editing software. I also have to like switch my editing software over the past like one year of editing and just like so that I can find a editing software that is perfect for me and, and I know how to use it properly. Back to you. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Uh, Grishma, you have anything to add on before we yes. open the floor to the um to the crowd? Yes, I have a few questions of mine as well. Just to top up a little bit, let me proceed with question number one from me. Now, I have one question, uh, specifically to Nathaniel actually. So I bet everyone in the audience is very very curious about how the robot really uh looks like in real life. So. Yes, you already explained how the robot actually moves and all these tiny details. However, I would like to know in general, how would people think about the robot's design? Will it be attractive? And what do you think about that, Nathaniel? I think that it is a good design because it is very simple. So it is very easily to, to be maintained. And also the design can be easily replicated to many other different fields. Definitely. Thank you for the excellent response. Let us proceed to our final question for SMO Saints. The final question from us moderators to the three of you is, what did you learn from this competition? Since I believe that victory has impacted the three of you, well, luck is really on your side and your project is really, really good. Akiko, what do you think about that? Yeah, um, I learned a lot of things from this competition. Uh, one of them is that not to overlook simplicity. Uh, as, you, as you saw just now, our robot was very, very simple. And actually, the first time that I touched on to this topic was when I was watching, um, I was editing the interview video for our, um, our school YouTube channel. We had a video of um, Jen interviewing his siblings who were both engineers. Uh, his brother said that most often than not, the best designs are all actually simple and it never really stuck on to me until uh, the, the day that the results were announced. Because honestly, to be completely honest, I had no faith in winning at all because I saw all the other projects, they were all so magnificent they were all so much more like they were all on a larger scale than ours. There were even some people uh, that are actually doing something to impact the education system in their school on how to educate kids better with um, better technology. So compared to our robot, I thought, no, we, we wouldn't win this, but luckily we did. So yeah, I think that simplicity is very often overlooked and it has a very big impact on everything that I do today. Yeah. Next. Thank you, Akiko. Excellent response from you. Let us um, add on. Nathaniel or Ryan, would you like to add on any of your opinions? 
As for me, I learned how to make things from scratch. As I mostly use what I had lying around, such as popsicle sticks, wooden skewers, and even leftover aluminium sheet from roofing material. I learned how to improvise, such as using small screwdrivers to make the holes in the popsicle sticks, because I didn't have the right tools. I also learned to implicate measurements in real life, such as using pi to calculate the parameter of the robot to be covered with aluminium sheath. I also learned how to use safety precautions, such as wearing safety glasses and gloves while handling, handling dangerous objects uh, the hard way because while I was cutting the aluminium sheath, I actually got a really nasty cut on my left thumb. Thank you. That was a really smart and very straightforward response, I would say. Uh, Ryan, would you like to add or would you like to say something? Well, I learned that uh, working, working as a team is better than working alone. So because if you work as a team, right, you can discuss with each other and learn extra knowledge that you do not know. And if you work alone, you do, you do not know that knowledge and you have to like search it up on Google just to know. And when working as a team, you can split up the responsibilities so that it's going to be easier. But if you work alone, you will take all the responsibilities and it's going to be way harder. So that's why working as a team is better than working alone. Thank you. Wow, I'm so proud of all of you. Your responses are so, so amazing. Thank you very much, guys. Now, the moment you have all been waiting for, we will now open the floor to questions. Yes. Our audiences that are watching live on YouTube, you may ask questions. Just type it down in the chat box down below. We will try to find out your questions and we will ask it directly towards our beloved presenters in front of you. Don't hesitate, you may proceed. The floor is now open. Okay, any questions from the floor? Yes, I've spotted one question, correct. Thank you. Tian, you may read out the question if you'd like. Okay, so I spot, so Natalia asked how hard was it to do the project? Anyone want to answer? Nathaniel, since you're the, what? You're the creator well, you the the project... for this project, so you want to answer? Well, I didn't have the right tools to make the project, so sometimes I had to improvise as I said, using screwdrivers to make holes in popsicle sticks. And also the design I actually got from YouTube, but then uh, their design was actually a triangle. So I tried to manipulate the design and then I used Lego to replicate the design in a simpler form. So I tried to make it in an inline uh, way, as you can see here, their design was a triangle but mine is just flat. So when I saw that it worked in, uh, when I when I saw that it worked, I started trying to uh, get what I could to make the project. And then uh, after that, I tried to make the project and uh, I saw that it worked. So yeah, it was not really that hard, but yes, yeah, also pretty hard. I also spotted another question. Someone asked, how long do you take to build the robot? Actually, it didn't take me that long to build the robot, but finding the materials from around, uh, from around the house and finding the suitable materials took me a, a while, yes. If you, is it okay if you can give us like a maybe specific no more specific answer like maybe how many months or how many days or how uh, many weeks okay uh the materials probably around two months for me to get but then the robot i could have just made it in seven days like in a week yes okay all right any more questions did you get any help from your parents or teachers i bet everyone the three of you can answer this since i know that some have to do the robot some have to do the powerpoint presentation some have to um, edit and some have to prepare the script so it's 
a lot of job. How how would you guys answer this? I got help from my father from buying stuff from Shopee lah. Like the motors, I couldn't find them anywhere. But that's the only thing that I actually bought. Yes. Ah, I see. Uh, how about Tiko? I think you're the one who prepared the PowerPoint, right? Yeah, I prepared the PowerPoint for the judging session. Uh, I didn't really got any help from my parents, but it's just because I didn't need to. Uh, the only thing uh, I had like something to do with my parents is that um, I stayed up a bit late at night to make the PowerPoint. Yeah, that's all. Other than that, nothing. Okay. uh what can the robot do i they just answered that in the presentation just now if you got place you if, if you if you pay close attention they already answered that in their presentation just now do you have any other plan to come up with other innovation nothing else yeah maybe but oh, wait. Okay, first... oh, yeah, yeah. uh everyone of you can answer actually uh sorry, yeah sorry, maybe but first uh i would probably do a second version of the robot as i said uh stated before okay how how do you guys come up with came up with the idea of the design of the robot they already explained it it's from youtube and did something inspire you guys for the robot design they also find it in youtube youtube is their inspiration uh how did ryan got get included in this project uh Anyone? funny thing right. is um, yes. <laughs> actually, uh, Nathaniel came up with the idea of the robot, and so he started looking for a team, right? Uh, so I joined the team, and then a teacher, Susan, our uh, club teacher, she just she just said, "Hey, why not let Ryan join?" So yeah, that's like how he joined. Shout out to teacher Susan in the chat. Shout out, shout yeah. out. It was a really yeah, awkward experience at first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the teacher okay. said he um, was a great uh, video editor. So yeah, I just um, picked him. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, last question. Uh, is making a robot needs a high cost? From uh, this robot... Uh, it's not that high cost because most of them was from recycled materials and the motors i, I got them only for a few belas ringgit lah it's not that expensive okay. yeah you don't really so need a I lot guess, yeah so i guess that's the end for your presentation slot i want to thank all of you you guys did a very spectacular job uh, thank job, guys. you guys all right y'all did amazing so, honestly yeah yeah, yeah y'all did amazing. Amazing. honestly amazing Thanks. So you guys too. before I uh, proceed on to the next group, I would like to just remind the chat again. Um, please make full use of the chat. The chat is not a place for you to spam unrelated stuff or be toxic over there. We might take some serious action if you fail to abide with the terms and regulations. Yeah. All right. Now, thank you, SML Saints. Now, I would like to move on to SJKC St. James, the moment you guys have been waiting for. So, let me introduce Joel Chin, Yue Xin, and also Ryan Ng Junae. We let Ryan Ng rest for a bit, da ha. Okay, so both of these students will be presenting their maths, PBL, or project based learning. So, first off, we will have Joel presenting her. PBL regarding the currency of Malaysia. Joel, you may take the stage. Wait, 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 wait. Hi. Uh, okay. Wait, Good afternoon. Uh, Good afternoon, Kazali, I... teachers and fellow friends. My name is Joel Chen Yusing. I am eight years old. I study in SJKC Sengen in Kota Kinabalu. I am in Primary two, my PBL project subject is mathematics. Topic is money. Due to the effect of COVID nineteen, every family is facing financial difficulties. However, I wish to buy foster care during this period in order not to increase the burden of my parents. I need to find another way to buy my foster care. 
toilet. Before that, I need to know our Malaysia money. It has two types of money. There are coins and notes. Firstly, our Malaysia has four types of coins. There are 5 cents, 10 cents, 20 cents, and 50 cents. Secondly, our Malaysia has six types of notes. The notes named as Malaysia ringgit. There are 1 ringgit, 5 ringgit, 10 ringgit, 50 ringgit, and 100 ringgit. Next. The characteristics of coins as follow. This is 5 cents. It has a silver color and a high discus. A high discus and at the back it has the Vestasiga motif. This is 10 cent. It also has a silver color and a hibiscus. At the back, this is the original types. This. Next. This is 20 cent. It has a gold color and a hibiscus. At the back, it has the jasmine flower. Next. This is 50 cent. It also has a gold color and a hibiscus. At the back, it has a 13 states and one federal and the P tendrils motif. The characteristics of one ringgit as follow. This is one ringgit. It has a blue color and a hibiscus. This is the portrait yang dipotong akung jongku Abdul Rahman ibni jongku Muhammad. At the back, this is the wall symbol. Next. Yes. This is five ringgit. It has a green color and the hibiscus. And the portrait yang dipotong akung. At the back, it has the two hongdo. Next. Yes. This is Ten ringgit. It has a red color and the hibiscus. And the portrait yang di petang akong. At the back, it has the biggest flower, Rafasya. Now, this is my planning. How to buy my poster color. Before that, we need to know our source of my money or where my money comes from. My money comes from my Parents, grandparents, and relatives, angpao, and rewards. Next, saving. I would encourage saving. Only spend on what you need. Saving daily pocket money. Save money in the bank and earn your interest to save. Next. This is my two records. The first one is the weekly expenses and savings. The second one is the monthly expenses and savings. Next. Next. My planning how to buy 25 ringgit postal color. Because I have learned about the money, I will try to get my postal color with my savings and rewards from my parents during the school day before moving control order. I am able to save Two ringgit every week. Therefore, at the end of February, I have saved eight ringgit. I have saved twelve ringgit in my piggy bank previously. During this movement control order period, I wish to get the cost of my postal color to do my homework to reduce the financial burden of my mom and dad in this pandemic. Therefore, I asked. One ringgit as rewards when I help them to do the housework. My parents agreed with it. Hence, within 13 days, I get 30 ringgit rewards. And together with my saving, 12 ringgit, I have a total amount of 25 ringgit to survive the postal code in June. This is, this is my conclusion for my presentation. Saving is a good habit. It is helpful when any incident happens in our lifetime at this moment. 
my savings give me a help by reducing my parents' burden and shorten the time of rewards to achieve my goal to buy my poster color. That's the end of my presentation. All right, thank you, Joel. You can go and have a rest first. We let Ryan Koko to present his PBL first, yeah? All right, you can rest for a minute first. All right, so now I would like to invite uh, Ryan Ong. He will, be also, he will also be presenting his maths PBL, but this time regarding about the body mass index. In short form, BMI. Ryan Ong, the platform is yours. Uh. Can you show my presentation? Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan Ng. I'm 12 years old this year from SJKC St. James. Now, my theme is about measurement and geometry, and the topic is about length and mass. Now, here are some curriculum questions for you guys. Do you encounter obesity during the MCO? Not MCO, but dramatic weight gain. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, now here's another question for you. How do you maintain your body weight? Honestly, I would say maintaining a body weight is quite simple. If you are consistent, you are um, disciplined, and you know what is the right thing to eat and what is not. So it's actually quite simple and straightforward. If you take care of yourself, you maintain a healthy diet, you exercise, overall you'll be okay. Yeah, that's yeah. me. Yeah. Okay, so now many people ask me, what is obesity? So obesity is basically a medical condition which in excess of body fat that has accumulated to the extent that it may have an uh, adverse effect on health. Now, here is a uh, BMI chart, also known as body mass index chart. Now, if your BMI is, let's say, 18.5 uh, to 24.9, you're basically normal and your body is quite okay. Now, if your BMI is 25 to 29.9, you're overweight and you might need to lose some weight. Now, if your BMI is 30 to 39.9, you're obese and you it's either you have to lose some weight or you have to see a doctor. But if your BMI is above 40, you have to see a doctor immediately. Now, how do we calculate a BMI? Now, let's take this as an example. Uh, my weight for last year is, is around 44.2 kg and we want to convert it into grams. So we take 44.2 kg multiplied it by 1,000 because 1,000 grams is 1 kg. Then for my height for last year is 144 cm and we want to convert it into meters so we take uh, 144 divided by 100 because 100 cm is 1 meter and there when uh, we take those two together and divide them both and we can see our BMI and as you can see my BMI is normal now what causes obesity during the MCO what do you guys think I am the one who gained weight I shall have the right to answer this question <laughs> so two main things diet and exercise for diet, right? I believe everybody can during this MCO, you increase your trashy food intake. Now the audience, you, you don't need to fight with me. You know why? <laughs> the fastest thing to disappear from the supermarket shelves are uh instant noodles, Maggie meat, literally Maggie uh cup noodles and also drop off. And number two is exercise. Now you now before this, we have a lot of gym, a lot of gym breads. Uh, who loves to go to the gym, but now MC or all to do our laziness kicks in, right, Grishma? You can agree oh, with me on definitely. that, right? Definitely, definitely, yeah. My so favorite that's... food is instant noodles, and nobody will beat that. <laughs> but I, 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 if you oh. exercise, it's okay. So, why yes. not? Don't worry about it. Exercise and eat instant noodles. Happy life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I, that's probably for me, lah. Uh, diet and yeah, exercise, okay. that's the two main factors. Okay, now, uh, here are health problems that really, uh, that has relation in obesity. So, if you have obesity, you have a very high chance of getting type 2 diabetes, 
coronary heart disease, high blood pressure, or even cancer risk, such as colon cancer. Now, here are four ways to overcome obesity. Now, before I move on, uh, does anyone have any opinions on how you can overcome obesity? Yeah, you may give your opinion if you'd like. Okay. Uh, it, all, it always comes back to us. Discipline. Discipline is the key word. Discipline to control your diet. Discipline to exercise regularly. Discipline to keep yourself hydrated. And discipline yourself to get eight hours of sufficient sleep. That's my opinion. Krishma, how about you? Honestly, it's like I said, it's quite straightforward. If you know how to control yourself, number one, if you know how to take care of yourself, you take care of yourself mentally and physically. You have to be at both sides. So if you eat healthy, even though once in a while you eat a few maggie's or something like that, it's okay. It's fine. But if you take it on a regular basis, then that's where it starts to get dangerous. So everyone, please take care of yourself. Mentally, physically, we are all in the pandemic. It's getting difficult. Life is challenging. So please take care of yourself. Cherish your body and truly. Well, basically, I've, you guys just said the, the entire thing on my screen. And thank you for listening to my presentation. Remember to stay home, exercise more, and keep hydrated. Thank you for listening to my presentation. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Now, uh, someone invite Joel back because we're going to ask the questions. So thank you both. That's a very good presentation. Grishma, on to you. Thank you, Jen. Hello, Joel. Are you okay, Joel? You okay? Yeah. Very good. I would like to ask you a few questions, okay? Okay. Very good. Let's go. Question number one. Okay? All right. How do you feel when you are doing this project? Is it nice? Is it fun? It's nice. At first, I thought it was difficult because I was just seven years old at that moment. Mm -hmm. With my parents' help and my teacher's guidelines, I, it wasn't that difficult anymore. Good. So, um, is it fun making the project? Mm. It's nice? fun. It's fun. Very good. Very good, my dear. Let's proceed to our second question. Okay? Okay. Now, I would like to ask, last question. I promise it's the last question for me, okay? After this, you can go. Don't worry. Who helped you in making this project successful? It's your teachers, your mothers, right? And your friends. Am I right? Yes? My parents and teachers. Mm -hmm. My teacher provided the guidelines so I don't go wrong. My parents found the information and the pictures from the internet. And it turned out smooth and successful. And I designed the scrapbook too. Very good. Okay, I would like to ask you one last question. Okay, one last question. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a vet because Ooh. I can be a vet. Wow. A vet. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm done for my part. Jen, you make a say right. thank you. Okay. Joella, uh Jen Coco got two questions for you. So my first question for you is, do you know what is STEM? Yes, STEM is science, technology, engineering, and maths. Very good. Hey, y'all give her a cut, please. You, you did a All right, uh, one last question for Jian Koko is, do you like online classes? Um, due to this COVID-19, everyone has to attend the online class but i like online class but if i had a choice i would prefer 
to go to regular school because I can meet all my friends and we can talk and play together and I can interact with my teacher when she's teaching. Hopefully COVID will go away soon so we can go back to regular school. Yeah, Coco also hope that this COVID-19 pandemic is also, can be over because I also miss my friends. I miss uh, <laughs> interacting with my friends physically and also, yeah. So thank you so much, Joel, and you can mute yourself first. And now I proceed to Ryan. Hello, what's up? So I got a oh. question for you. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so we all know the fact that obesity impacts on an individual's physical health. But would you mind explain to us, to the crowd, so how obesity can impact a person's mental health? Well, uh, usually fat people can, they will uh, cannot bully by most people because of like how they look. And you know, so most of the time, because if they're getting bullied like by people judging by their looks because they're fat, whenever they're like having social interactions, they'll have bad mindsets that they're thinking that people will have a bad mindset of them, thinking that they're fat, they don't like them, they don't want to be their friends. And because of that, it and can affect their mental health and it can even cause depression, you know? I can totally agree um, you with that because I've actually been through that stage. So a lot of you don't know, but I am a walking watermelon when I was in primary five and primary six. So I was being verbally assaulted for like months by my classmates, actually. Uh, it's so serious that literally the whole, almost the whole class is being sent to the vice principal's office. You can imagine how serious is that? Like, yeah, I mean, I did not went through depression. The word depression is too dramatic, but I definitely have some emotion unstability. Lah. Yeah, that's my dark history for yeah, yeah, that's part of my dark history. So, uh, I my last question for you is: We all know the fact that online learning can be really, really, really stressful for a lot of students. I myself and Ingrishma included, right? So please, I couldn't agree more. So, how do you release your tension during this PTPR session? Well, I release my tension by uh, sometimes playing games with my friends, or like sometimes just. Uh, talking to them on Discord, uh, because that because usually talking to your friends you can release your stress. It's like you can think. Usually you talk to your friends, you have like a positive thoughts because you always talk about positive things. And sometimes you can just tell your friends about the negative things you have. Then they can like uh, become your personal therapy. And that's how I release my attention during the MCL, like in the apartment. Yeah. Uh, I also play games with I also play games with my friends when I am really stressed out during PDPR season. All right, that's all from me. Rishma, you have anything to add? Yeah, I have a few questions of mine as well. Oh, apologies, the rain is very heavy in Kota Kinabalu now, actually. Anyways, let me proceed. Yeah, yeah. The line isn't quite good, actually. Um, let's proceed with question number one. Um, so basically, you need a wide amount of knowledge to really understand what obesity is and a good amount of sauce is actually needed, am I right, Ryan? So what yes. exactly are your sources or ways that you use to collect information for this particular PBL project? Well, what do you think? I, well, my ways of getting sources are either from watching uh, YouTube science documentary videos or going up to Google and searching up for extra information because why not? Or sometimes overhearing my parents uh, when they're teaching their students. And that's the way I get my sources of information from. Definitely, very good response. I would say that many um, social media applications and like Google, for example, or other apps that you can use to check out or even general knowledge that you know. However, one tip to all the audience also is that I would like to say not everything on social media is true. So you shouldn't really body shame or control yourself. Hey, I want to get skinnier. Hey, I want this and that. Listen, models have their bodies edited from time to time as well. Nobody in this world is perfect. So don't worry about it. You are beautiful just the way you are. Now let's proceed to question number two. Ryan, do you really prefer this way of learning? As you know, online classes are really, really challenging and difficult. 
we know that one tab will be open Google Classroom and the other tab will be open YouTube. Now, am I right? What do you think? Well, to be honest, I prefer online classes more because, well, if you think about it, whenever you're at school, right, you're, whenever you like do a little bit, like you do something wrong, you like you do something wrong, then you get scolded by a teacher. Or sometimes you do like something wrong by accident, then your friends snitch on you, then your teachers will scold you. But if you're doing it like on, on during online classes, uh, you can't really do anything bad. Like I'm just I'm not saying that you can do you can't do anything bad during online classes. I'm just saying that you can't really do anything bad. So it's like uh, you feel like you don't get into trouble that easily and you yeah and that's why i prefer online classes more definitely i would like to add on one point to your opinion as well honestly mm -hmm. i prefer um our normal school the one before the covid 19 pandemic even though online class is quite good and all it's very convenient it's without technological feel it's very fun honestly but I would say that I miss the interaction with our friends that are face to face. Yes, I COVID nineteen really stopped everything, right? That is so true. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. Very excellent response from you. Let us proceed. The floor will now open for questions. Audiences, you may ask them questions just like before. Type it down in the chat box down below. We will spot them and we will ask them. All right. Uh, do a quick a really quick interruption. So some of y'all don't know where the 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 link the kehadiran link is so the link for the kehadiran is in the description box you can go check it out all right now you may ask what well, now let me spot some questions over here gentle reminder the this the attendance link is in the description box down below for anyone who missed it out let us proceed. Anybody have any questions related to obesity or related to them? Any personal questions or related to their topic? You may ask them any questions, in fact. We are happy. You to may be ask able us to... moderator as well. Feel free to ask us moderators if you have any questions. We, well, Honestly, we are more than happy yeah, yeah. to answer. We're okay with it. Don't worry. If anyone have any questions, another how 20 did Joel, seconds how did joel attend this stem webinar 2021 okay i can help you answer i, I can help you uh answer this question aiden so we invited joel to come here also actually ppd we actually so joel actually presented her project in ppd as well before before this webinar so we thought it would be great if we invite her again since our motive is to actually prove to the audiences that age is not a barrier when it comes to STEM. Am I right? Yes, yeah, actually, so, yeah, it's quite straightforward, honestly. Anybody else yeah, have any questions? Why we, I don't know how to do the. Yeah. Are you happy doing this project? Who are you referring to? Both, both don't. Uh, to Joel? To Ryan or Joel? Or to both? Or to both. I take both both options. I take both. I think yeah, we take we take okay. Uh reminder, do not spam in this chat, yeah, because uh you're not the only one. You're not the only audience here. Please take note. Don't worry about it. Yeah, both. both well, I had very fun doing this project because it's like a new because during the MCO, right, you're doing all the same thing like every day. And I thought it would be fun that uh, I would do something new for at least a few days. So I would say that this whole event, this whole, yeah, this whole event and this whole process was a really, was really, really fun. Back to you. Okay. Joel, what's your answer? I am happy actually. I am happy doing the oh, Very good. Okay. Uh, final calling for questions. Any more? 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, no question. So thank you both for your participation. Really, really good job, yeah, Joel. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Ryan. All right.
Now I pass my session, um, I pass my time to my trusty assistant, Grishma. Thank you very much, Jen, for assisting me for the whole time. Next up, allow me to invite two talented students from SMK Bandaraya Kota Kinabalu, Shihani Safia and Brittany Cynthia Lewis, to do a short presentation on their user friendly project named Postdocs. Now, before they begin, allow me to tell you about their awards that they have won. There are five in total. It might take a while, but I'll read it out to you anyway. Gold medal with Malaysia's International Young Exhibition Conference and Innovation 2021, Silver Medal in International Digital Innovation and Invention IDIC 2021, Gold Medal Sign Darby Young Innovators Challenge 2021, Third Prize Winner Para International Metamorphosis of Young Stemmers 2020, and finally the Bronze Seminar Research and National Level Educational Innovation Competition 2021. That concludes my part. Let's give them a warm welcome. SMK Bandaraya Kota Kinabalu, the platform is yours. Can you see my screen? Is everything good for you? Uh, not yet. Mr. Ghazali, is it okay if you... Ah, uh, okay. 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 It's loading and... Yes! Uh, okay. Oh, okay. yeah. All right, good. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sh Wait, Shihani. Uh... Oh, no. Give us a moment, yeah? As you know, internet connection now is very bad. Yeah, it's pretty rainy right now. Um, it's very, very bad. Terribly sorry for that. We will try and fix this immediately. Hello? <laughs> hello, hello. Um, Shihani, your camera is not on and we can't see your presentation right now. Ah, uh, okay. Wait. Give us a moment, dearest audiences. Can you see me now? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see All you. right, thank you. <laughs> No problem. Um, we hope that everybody understands our current situation right now because it's literally <laughs> monsoon season and there's a lot of strong wind right now. Oh, and my sincerest apologies. Yeah. Sincerest apologies. Okay, I already share my screen. Can you see it? It's loading. Yep, we can. And now. All right. Uh, all right. Good. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shahani and my friend Brittany today will be sharing about Postdoc, our STEM innovation project. Our innovation is about solving the problem in our daily lives, especially during this pandemic. So staying at home makes us eager to do more online shopping, right? Everyone loves online shopping. I do too. But the postman always send my parcel when I'm not home and no one is there to claim it. And I will have to face several inconvenience if I went to pick it up at the post office. Now we come to the next point, which is existing solution and its limitation. In Malaysia, we do have this thing called Postlaju Easy Box, Parcel 365 and Pop Box. These boxes enable customers to pick up their parcel when they have no way to drop it off. But customers can only pick up their parcel within 48 hours, not to mention that is, it is only available at certain locations such as KS, Langun, Johor, and Terengganu. Next, you can also switch your address to your office address, but then it will be floated with parcels. Lastly, you can just claim your parcel at the post office, but it is tiring and a waste of time. That's why we invented Postdoc to help you with the problem. Now we are going to show you guys a video of how it works.
As you can see, there's only three simple steps, which is key in, where the postman would key in the tracking number, then the door will unlock and postman can drop the parcel. Lastly, the postman just needs to confirm the delivery. It is very easy, simple to use, and most importantly, it will solve the mention problem. These post talks will have a lot of impacts to a broad range of users. For example, busy working adults such as teachers, or we can consider about doctors and nurses that cannot be home during this pandemic, university students, and all shopping online consumers. Using these post talks, recipients are able to receive their parcels at all time without having problems that we have stated earlier. Since last year, Postdocs has earned so many achievements in the STEM community, such as Young Innovator Challenge 2020, Perak International Metamor Metamorphosis of Young STEMers 2020, Malaysia Young Scientist Conference and Exhibition 2021, and International Digital Innovation and Invention Challenge 2021. As you can see from what my friend Chihani has explained earlier, we have designing, building, and testing our innovation. And that we follow the engineering design process guided by Madam Nadia Richard, our science teacher, to make our STEM project a success. The first step in engineering design process is we ask the questions about problems that we observe. What is the problem or need? Who has the, who has the problem or need? Why is it important to solve? We did background research to learn from the experience of others to help us find out about the, exist, the existing solutions to similar problems and to avoid mistakes that were made in the past. Then, we did background research in two major areas that are users or customers and existing solutions. We plan, do a diagram, list of materials we need and planning. Then, we create it according to our plan. Then again, step five, we test and improve according to our teachers' and clients' feedbacks, and also judges' feedbacks when we join any competition. And lastly, we share here with you all about our STEM project. To all my friends and fellow students out there, we hope our project and story success will inspire you to do and brainstorm another wonderful STEM ideas, whereas we found that STEM is not that hard and STEM is so interesting to learn and to explore. That's all from us. Thank you very much. Thank you, SMK Bandaraya, for the spectacular presentation. Indeed, STEM is a wide amount of knowledge, just, just as wide as the sea. So I can, read, I can totally agree with what Whitney said just now. So before I open the floor to the audiences, I open the floor for questions. I got um, two questions to ask both of you, Shihani and Brittany. So my first question for both of you is, what if the postman put something bad inside? Not, or what if they put the, not put the incorrect parcel? Maybe one of you can answer, Shihani? Uh, okay, so we have done our research on this. Uh, so based on our online reading experience and Asking around, each delivery will be handled by a specific post person. Thus, any wrongdoings will be easily tracked. All right, Brittany, you have anything to add on? Mm. Ah, okay, okay, it's okay. Uh, so that's actually a very good innovation, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually pretty shocked that you, you, are, you guys can come up with this, with this genius idea. So my last question for you is, do you have any suggestions on how to improve our PDPR or online learning system since we know that there are a lot of flaws right now? What are your opinions? Yes, yes. Instead of just doing assignments, I recommend making online classes more interesting by doing quizzes, contests, and other fan activities. 
Teachers can also introduce useful learning apps to students such as Google Classroom, Quizzes, Kahoot, Quizlet, and more. By doing so, students will be able to focus better in online classes and will be more likely to stay motivated and productive throughout this time. All right, thank you, Brittany. Shihani, you have anything to add on? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Uh, if that's if that's it, then I conclude my part. Krishma, you have anything to add on? Yeah, thank you, Jen. Um... Oh no, it seems that... Let's, nowadays, as, as you... As you... Oh. Sorry, what was that? No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay. I think it's my line. <laughs> No uh, problem. It's okay, you may, you may proceed. Thank you. Let's proceed. Uh, I have a question. So this particular project is really towards, um, like especially when working people are out and you need to deliver things and so, correct? So nowadays due to the pandemic, so everybody is at home actually. Most of us are working, working from home and anyone at home can receive the parcel. So I would like to ask, is this particular project really needed in your eyes? Any one of you would like to start? Shihani, perhaps? Y yes, yes, even though. Even though. <laughs> uh, yeah, go on, go on, go on. Go on. It's all right. Okay. Don't worry. I will answer it. Yes, even though we are working from home, it is recommended to reduce human contact. And post-talks is one of the methods. Because from our online reading, According to United Nations Conference on Trade and Develop Development website, the COVID-19 pandemic has forever changed online shopping behaviors. There are acceleration of online shopping globally. Thus, we believe our post stocks will be in high demand. Thank you, Brittany. Amazing response from you. Shihani, would you like to add on or we can proceed? Mm, nothing. Nothing. All right, don't worry, we'll go to the next question. Thank you, Brittany. Let's go. How do you remain active during the PDPR season? So guys, as you know, now is the COVID-19 pandemic. Everything is in a mess. Our homework, our assignments, our work, everything is just in a mess, actually. Even as a student myself, everything is chaos. However, we will put that aside. So what are some tips that you would like to suggest to everyone on how to be active during this uh, PKP or Corona season. Uh, Shihani, to would me, you like to uh, Yes, go please. ahead. To me, remaining active during PDPR is such an important thing. I would make a schedule. It helps me prevent procrastination and instill good habits like completing work on time. Other than that, I would do whatever that makes me feel relaxed. Definitely, it's a really good response. Thank you, Shihani. Okay, right. would you like to add on? No. No? Don't worry. Thank you very much. SMK Bangare Kota Kinabalu. Thank you for your wonderful presentation. Uh, let us proceed to our second part of our event. As usual, the floor is now open. Audiences, okay. type in your questions in the box down below. Jen, you may proceed right. as usual. I spot I spotted two questions. Uh, the question number one is, is postdocs heavy? Uh, no, postdoc is very light. It's not heavy at all. All right. Uh, the second question I spotted is, uh, what is your future improvement for this pro, for this product, for, for this product? Uh, we, we wish to add sanitizing system for the parcel inside the postdoc as well as well we all know sanitizing is very important especially during this COVID-19 pandemic okay thank you uh Jen may I ask a few questions my own as yeah, well yeah sure go on yeah go I ahead, spotted a few questions in the chat box I noticed that uh, this is not really well uh, related but I would just like to ask on behalf of Natalia so shout out to you um she said that oh this presentation is quite good I love it thank you very much for your support but I need to know, how do we stop getting distracted so easily on our phones? This is not related to your project, but more mm. on general knowledge. So any tips from you guys? Even I am a phone addict, but 
I try to control myself from time to time. Uh, Brittany honestly, or Shihani? Honestly, I'm on my phone a lot. I'm. I don't have any tips, but try doing something productive. Maybe reading or doing your homework. <laughs> Definitely. How about you, Brittany? Um, I think you can do uh, uh, your timetable and and uh, and always <laughs> I think you can do your own timetable and to be more productive and not doing not doing any procrastination is it yes yeah i assume so yeah that's a very good response even though it's simple but sometimes guys even the simple things are very straightforward so as you know the project is wonderful congratulations on your awards jen you may proceed to the next part thank you very much isn't you all right we can do a we is it okay if you ask two more questions? Is it okay if we can ask both of you two more questions? Oh, wait. Okay. So the first question is, what? Oh, wait. Is it hard to make the post talks and how do you make it? Because I spot, right? I spotted that there are some codings required and not everybody can really understand how coding works. So mm. what's your opinion? Mm. Um, actually, for the coding part, we haven't finished coding it yet because of MCO and we don't have enough equipment to do it. That's why we are still stuck in the coding part. For the postdoc itself, we firstly, we did it with a congruent board, the one that have zigzag in it. So yes, it's yes, yes. thick. And then we send it to a professional to make mm -hmm. it from aluminium. Oh, aluminium. Wow. Yeah, but we okay. made only one because it is very costly. Expensive. I see, I see. <laughs> so overall, right, is it hard? Is it overall? I mean, is it hard? Hmm, I don't think so. No, because I, I'm having fun doing this project. It's very ah. fun because if one day postdoc is really, uh, we can use it in our community, I would use it so much because I'm very lazy mm -hmm. to just take my parcel outside. <laughs> I feel you, sis. I feel you. Don't worry. I have tons of parcels outside. Do not oh worry. Oh my God. Same. I can relate. Don't worry. Let's, um, let's ask right. you one last question. I popped it from the audience. What encouraged um, the both of you? Sorry. Um, you wait for a minute now. Do we have enough time? I think we have enough time, right? I we have more than enough. It's still more than enough. Don't worry. One <laughs> small question enough. will be all right, Dan. Do not worry. We will be fine. Because I have like, because we have a ton of questions over here. Like we have what encourages both of the yes. in innovation and how much co what's the cost of this project and what are the materials? Yeah. That's um, which one you can ask us, and then I ask the both of them about my. The question has uh, lah. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so um, what actually encouraged the both of you to be involved in innovation? Like, um, what I'm trying to say is that um, in materials or how to find them. So what do you think about that, honestly? Anyone would like to start? Either both of you? Shihani? To me, what encouraged me is because because of i love online shopping that's why i want to build this and i want to use it one day yeah wow. definitely yeah that's a very straightforward response yeah uh jen shall we proceed or all right since we have excessive amount of time i can is it okay if i ask four questions from the audience sure all right so the first two questions are how how much is the cost of how much is the budget of this uh project and what are the materials you guys used uh 
Um, Brittany, want to answer? Um, the cost for this project is 5,700 ringgit for 10 postdocs. Mm -hmm. And oh. it's made it's made from metal. Mm -hmm. It's made from metal and and that's it. <laughs> ah, okay. Sure, that's sure, all right. Sure. Okay. okay, okay, Jen. That's all right. No. Um, let me check. All right. The third question is from Teacher Susan, believe it or not. What encouraged both of you to involve in innovation? Again, that what question. What encourages you? Oh, I'm sorry. Already, yeah. already. already. <laughs> the first one. Oh, don't oh, worry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's don't all right, don't worry. I did not pay attention. Uh, no problem. Then, let me check. Did you got any error while doing the coding? Who did the coding over here? I did. Okay, oh, Shihani. So, wow. did you have any there's, error while doing this coding? There's a lot of error. Ooh. A lot of. Okay. I can't even count with my hands. Every time I do it, uh, so when I look at the YouTube, I do it exactly the same, but it still have something wrong so i don't know what is wrong with the coding maybe coding isn't for me i mean it's really relatable uh, since you know like coding you have a lot of mm. uh, you, sometimes you have python sometimes you have arduino every every different wait what 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 is it called every time got, every, got, got different uh got different codes uh, so it's mm -hmm. understandable so mm -hmm. yeah I think that's our final question. So thank you both of you. You guys did a really uh, good job. Thank and you. I must say that that's a very genius idea. Thank so, you. So yes, thank you both of you. Now, Krishna, right. you may proceed. OK, before our audience really gets bored, let's proceed to the next part. Now, thank you, Jen. Before we wrap up our event, Let's introduce our final representative from SK St. Francis Convent Primary School, Bernice Wong Housing, to present her project entitled My Imaginary Animal. For your information, ladies and gentlemen, she won an outstanding platinum award in the KMR PBL school level competition. Let's welcome her with warm arms. Without any delay, St. Francis Convent, go ahead. Hello and a very good afternoon to our Prarasmi, Yang Bahagia, Guan Tanya, school principals, PPD officers, teachers, parents, students, ladies, and gentlemen. My name is Bernice Wong. I am a year five student from SK San Francis Convent. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present my project to you. We use our mind to think, to reason, to understand, and to imagine. I like to imagine. Do you like to imagine too? Try to imagine being a flying animal. Where would I fly to? What about being a friend of polar bears in the North Pole? I can't imagine living underground and sleep with the moles, the worms, and the ants. Hmm. Can you imagine living in the deep sea where there is very little sunlight? How do you swim about? How do you find food? How do you protect yourself? Well, that is the imaginary animal that I would like to share with you today. This is my imaginary animal. This animal is a combination of a hammerhead shark and a cuttlefish. It mostly lives around the deep tropical water, around the sunlight zone and the twilight zone. However, it is quite adaptive and can live in almost any ocean in the world. This is an example of the habitat of my imaginary animal. You can see the beautiful tube corals together with some wire corals, starfish, sea urchins, and rocks. Let's have a look at the skin, which is bright and colorful. This opossumatic coloration, which means bright colors, will warn predators that it is poisonous, so predators don't get near. Apart from that, my imaginary animal is able to change its color to 
to blend into its background to camouflage. I'm sure predators will not even notice it when they pass by. As for the spikes, they help make it look more intimidating to rivals which are trying to take its territory. Well, I still have not introduced the name of my imaginary animal to you yet. My imaginary animal is called Luminous for its very unique feature. It can light up its body. The bright light helps it to attract food, especially in the dark. Luminous is an omnivore. Its diet mainly consists of mollusks, crustaceans, small fish, mussels, and other invertebrates. Next, my imaginary animal is an invertebrate, which means it doesn't have any bones. This makes its body very flexible. With the fins, it is able to maneuver freely in the water even where there are obstacles. What is so special about the tentacles? These tentacles can regenerate if injured by predators. This is called autotomy. Luminous also uses its tentacles to grab its prey. Now, let's take a look at one of the most important sensing organs, the eyes. For us humans, we can only move our eyes in parallel direction. We can move both eyes to the right, left, up, or down. Can we move one eye to the right while the other eye is at the left? No. Maybe you can move both eyes to the center like this, but only for a few seconds. However, luminous eyes have the ability to move independently of one another, allowing them to have a 360 degree field of vision. So it can see the whole surrounding very well. Let's continue to the head. Its head is shaped like a hammer. So just like a hammer head shark, it also has ampullae of Lorenzini, which are special sensing organs to send the electrical fields given off by other animals in the perimeter. Therefore, it makes it easier for Luminous to detect its prey. Luminous of the ampullae of Lorenzini also allows Luminous to detect changes in the water temperature. In terms of size, the length of its body is 52 centimeters. The circumference is 8.5 centimeters. The tentacles can grow up to 26 centimeters. Luminous weighs about 3 kilograms. It is an invertebrate. Usually bones take up 30% of the total weight of sea creatures. Though this is just an imaginary animal that I have imagined, who knows, one day someone might actually discover a new species exactly like Luminous. That will be interesting. This is my imaginary animal. What about yours? I have come to the end of my presentation. I hope you have enjoyed it. You can ask me if you have any questions. I will be glad to answer you. All right. Thank you, Bernice, for the really wonderful presentation. I must say that your idea is really, really creative. And I'm I'm actually kind of speechless right now because it's actually very creative. Now, I have uh, two questions in hand. So Luminous is a very sophisticated project of yours. So would you mind share to the audience that what is the inspiration behind this creative project of yours? When I was younger, I read a picture book about lanternfish. I was amazed at this wonder of the creature. It left a strong impression on me. When doing this project, I decided to make an imaginary animal that has the characteristics of a lanternfish. I see. Well, that's really interesting. So my final question for you is, projects like this 
normally takes a long time, a long period of time to really complete, in my personal opinion. Lah. But based on skills, uh, based on skill, detail and perfection, how were you capable of completing this in a short period of time? And I believe you maybe you may have some assistance in making this project a successful one. So would you mind if you can share who are the ones who helped you making this project? I was able to complete, complete this project in about three days. I'm not sure if I can consider it a short time because I worked on it from afternoon till evening, non-stop. Other than that, during my months, here I would like to impress my thanks to my aunt who has been so supportive and encouraging in everything I do. Not forgetting my brother, who is an animal lover and always with me whenever I need him. All right. Thank you, Bernice. Um, Grishma, you have anything to add on? Yes, I will add on as usual. Bernice, I have a few questions for you as well. Based on my understanding, especially with the COVID-19 pandemic or the situation, both of us can certainly relate that items that are needed for projects sometimes can be very, very difficult to find, right? So I would like to ask, financially, are there any burdens? Or could you explain to us how did you find your equipment needed for this project? Yes, there were some burdens. This project was done during the time of MCO. It was difficult to buy craft materials, so I just used whatever material that I could find at home. As for the base and corals, I used egg trays, tissue rolls, and pipe cleaners. The middle part of the body was made with a Coca-Cola bottle. The head and the tentacles were made with recycled whiskers. Then I painted them using acrylic, a type of paint. I was so happy that the Christmas tree lights were still working well, which were used to light up the body. So I did not spend that much money in making this project. Thank you, Bernice. That's very good. I can see that you're very uh, smart in finding items uh, related so that for you can uh, you can use the items for your project. Thank you very much. I can see that you're a very wise person inside. Let's proceed to our final question. I see that your project is really related something to uh, it's related something towards aquatic life, right? So I would like to ask: Have you considered being a marine biologist, perhaps? once you step out into the community? Or in a more simpler way, what do you want to be once you finish your studies? Uh, when I was little, I ever thought about being a paleontologist where I could pick up dinosaur bones and study about fossilized animals. That was my childhood fantasy and it lasted for a few years. Now my dream is to be an architect to follow after the footsteps of my aunt. I think it is cool to be able to design buildings. As we grow, we may change our dreams because we gain new knowledge and new experience every day. Whether I will be an architect, a paleontologist, or a biologist, that will be in the future. As for now, my job is to study well and be a good student very good thank you very much honestly i love your responses do you know why it's very honest it's very relatable to our lifestyle nowadays so thank you very much for your response and opinions have a great day bernice you may proceed jen would you like to continue all right um the mods have asked their questions and now everyone has been really active so you all let me check us ah, so you are now welcome to ask any questions ladies and gentlemen you have the rights to ask them now the floor so, is open you may continue if does you'd the like swan on its body is just a style or or has any other advantage oh yeah but it's so i see that your luminous what is it luminous yes 
Luminous has horns. So what is what is the advantages of it? The spikes are to intimidate rivals, which will try to take its territory. All right. Okay. So another question from just Susan is, what is the best part do you think you learn from your project? And will you continue your fantastic imagination to produce more products? Uh, three sentences from me, stay focused, time management, and science is very fun. Agreed. Yes. Honestly, yes. All of us love science. Science is all of us love science. Yeah, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. How long do it's you do? Simple. How long do you do your project? Jessie, she uh, she finished her project under three days. All right. Uh, you have a very creative mind, and which part was hard for you to do in making this luminous? The hard part was. Finding the materials when I, when I couldn't find them. Ah, okay, okay. It's yes, yes, that can be a problem. Yeah, definitely. That is a big issue when, especially for making projects. All right. Any more? Come on, come on. We still have a bunch of time. We are literally still at 3.46. And we are almost, when we are almost at the end of this event. So please, um, Ask if you have any more questions in my in hand. You may ask any questions to Bernice or to us moderators as well. We would be happy mm -hmm. to answer your questions willingly. So don't worry. Yes. Don't you think three days for a project is quite fast? Wow, I'm surprised. It's quite fast. It's really fast. Yes, I take forever to finish one project. It's such a hassle. I need to take at least a week to actually complete my assignment. Yes. Not my assignments, but my project. My, yeah, I'm my so project. happy for you, Bernice. The, the way you finish it very fast, although it's a simple project, but the, the way your movement and your explanations and everything is very clear. So us moderators can really understand what you're saying. We would like to thank you for that excellent I would really like to I really love how you actually don't actually manage your time properly you actually you don't have the heart to actually procrastinate not like us we tend to procrastinate <laughs> a lot <laughs> I mean a big yeah, issue so, <laughs> a big yeah. issue mm -hmm. how do you feel when you the moment you completed your project I felt relieved and happy you feel really happy and you feel happy and believe yeah all right any more any more to our audiences and... we have a 20 second countdown before all right but i would like to definitely recommend if you would like to ask any questions once more do don't be shy don't hesitate just drop it yeah. yes we are completely fine with it we do you face happy any stronger. struggle yeah she already answered that question just now Or you want her to repeat her answer again? Oh, there is another one, Jen. Oh, oh a student another. for either participants or moderator. Do all of you enjoy doing project PBL or just do from book to book study? Why? Vishma, you want to answer first? Um, so basically, I would say um, for PBL, right? This is actually a very sophisticated thing. However, if you really know what you're doing and if you take the time to learn how to do this and do that, you see our generation nowadays is very complicated in the way of science, technology, and many different things. So we learn differently. Our minds think differently. Um, even though we learn things from books, but projects seems to play a better impact on our lives. At least we learn, we're doing something. We remember what we're doing. Oh, we put a pencil inside. Oh, we put colors inside. So our mind tends to respond to it more creatively. However, books will still forever be the number one solution. But projects are now our 21st century way of learning. That I think is my opinion, honestly. For me, I really prefer project-based learning. I mean, I have to agree, we are now living in the 21st century. Everything is all hands-on. We have to discover ourselves. There's no choice. If you don't, if you don't know how to discover new stuff, you won't. 
I mean, if you don't know, you, if you don't have the urgency to like really go and find new stuff, right? You, I'm sorry, but you're such a failure. So, honestly, <laughs> honestly, yes. So agree. I really prefer project-based learning because we get to have, we students get to have the opportunity to, uh, we, we get to actually have the opportunity to, how do you say? Project our creativity. Yeah, because... Yeah, it's yeah. it's very relatable, honestly, Jian. Because um, let us moderators do have our time as well. We would love to share mm -hmm. our own opinions as well regarding yes. project based learning. As a presenter, uh, quite experienced in project based learning as well. Three years ago, I have been involved in all these PBL things in primary school. So I completely understand how project based learning impacts students' lives in a better version of it. Yes, books can showcase a different thing, but projects can show students a different thing show and showcase are really different different things one is you learn you sit you learn you understand project is you do you understand and you recall that is basically what project based learning is in my opinion so jen actually yes. has similar opinions yes we prefer projects it's simple and we're learning at the same time so part of pbl is that we get to know where our standards are so the teachers get to know where the standards are so if we completely abolish the um the chalk top or the book to books study method it will be really boring and we may not live we may just stuck at this one level but yes, with yes, the yes. help of project-based learning we are able to know our standards and improve ourselves better yeah so how doing stem projects can help in your study not only in primary secondary level but to the higher level for me um STEM is a platform where I actually get to solve things all by myself. For example, I actually participated in, me and Grishma both participated in the 2021 Helix competition or the Kelantan International Learning Innovating Exhibit. And it is through that competition, we get to learn a lot. For like example, pitching, we get to learn uh, problem statement, we get to know how to write abstracts, and yeah, we learn a lot through STEM. Uh, when it comes to affection to our future, since I actually wanted to become a nuclear energy when I grow up, when I step into this community, I want to go towards the science field. So I want to set my foundation firm by pushing myself to participate in all kinds of STEM programs so that I it won't be that tough when I step out into this community and contribute for my country yes yeah, definitely as as someone born in a family where the parents are more towards the science field um they can definitely like they really influence you even though you're just a student a secondary school student but they really know how to make you mature well know how to speak well know how to be involved in this particular stem activity so honestly i would say that stem is a very good influence towards students because you see, when I was younger, I was a very shy kid. So it from the way of talking, from the way of saying things, it it's like going up a stairs. You go up slowly. Even though you are a baby, you still go up slowly. You take your time, you learn how to do it. And after a while, you will just master the art and the skill of it. You will just have confidence in yourself and you'll be all right, just like what Jen said. Jen, shall we answer one last question? I saw a very interesting question on the top over there. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. from Madam Natalia, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you for your question. What did the two of you learn throughout all the presentations? So, Jen, what mm -hmm. do you think about that? Honestly. Learning, there is no boundaries when it comes to learn when it comes to learning. So in Chinese, we have a proverb that is called Xue Hai Wu Ya. So Xue Hai basically means uh Xue Hai Wu Ya is basically like when you learn. You don't limit yourself. And Ho Dao Lao Xue Dao Lao is my is my own is my own word. La. So when I think of Ho Dao Lao Xue Dao Lao, which is learn until the end of my life, it really motivates me and inspires me to be uh, do the extra mile. Yeah. That's yes, what that is basically. Mm, yes, it's because both of us moderators, we have our own histories, our own ways. Because in primary school, we were a completely different person. I promise you, we were really different. 
Jen and I met when we were Form 1. So I didn't know him, he didn't know me. Who would have thought that yes, two people yes. would actually make quite a great team in this event? So honestly, yes, yes, I would like yes, to give actually. a shout out to you. Thank you for assisting me too, uh, assisting me a lot towards this event. I'm glad that I yeah. got to know someone like you. And yeah, it's really, really good, honestly. Would you like to answer last question or because there's one I from the as more, well? I have two more questions, actually. So uh, someone asked, how do the pan pandemic affect your study? Of course, oh. it affects our study a lot. A lot. So it just... I am um, used to be dramatic. I used to be a dramatic genius when I was back in primary school. I used to like do well. I used to be in top three in my class. But since but when it comes to pandemic time, I my grades fall a lot. Believe it or not, I actually I nearly flunked my science when I was in form one because of the syllabus change and the like. Then I had to learn signs using english not chinese yeah it's really tough but it's the motivation that pushes me up again yeah yes how about you um honestly i actually have almost the same response so shall we um i saw one really interesting question i'm sorry we're really having our session here we moderators yeah, yeah, yeah. really love talking honestly we, we sincerely yeah, we apologize talking. yeah we talk a lot in person so we really are sorry for that so would you like to explain to um, our beloved audience, how did we get the role of moderator? Aha, this is the ah, real king of okay, questions. This is a real, how okay, did we a reach video. here? Jen, you explain the first part. Go ahead. All right. So way before this interview, I mean this webinar, we actually conducted, as I'm all saying, STEM Club conducted um, our own interview session with the hybrid group. Yes, Nathaniel, Akiko, and Ryan. So we invited Mr. Andrew Chong, Ms. Um, Juan Elsie, Madam Susan, uh, yeah, and a bunch of guests to just, uh, how do you say, to interview and learn from the, from our recent victories, which is the, which is from our World Innovative Science Fair. Yeah, that's the first part, Grishman, you can uh, proceed. Yeah, honestly, actually, it's, it's almost everything what Jenna said. So we ourselves are not really very familiar with this particular field but like i said we take the time and then we interviewed a few people we took time it's it it was really difficult honestly but like i said with practice confidence and skill you will be great you'll be great amazing you won't ever doubt yourself ever again so jen would you like to wrap this up with our final question there's one really good question that we can wrap it up um mm -hmm. any motivation or inspiring words to all the audience and all the junior online juniors online over here that will be the question that wraps up everything yep, it's from that will, this will be the question that wraps up everything yes For me, i have to say to okay to those juniors to those kids who are watching this live stream i would like to say that don't limit yourself if you think you can do it you can for go sure. ahead you can go despite can despite all of the amount of distractions you are getting from your family from your um from your classmates from your teachers if you think you have the possibility to make it go ahead nothing is impossible when it comes to step Rishma, how about yes. you yes you really have to trust yourself the process is very difficult it's challenging you from the start until the beginning so what you really want to ask yourself is how far am I going to go? How well am I going to do it? And how am I going to make my parents and teachers proud? Honestly, this is the symbol that we hold as a student ourselves. We don't just study and study just like that. No, we study for our future. We study for our parents and we do these projects to make our parents proud, our teachers proud and everybody around us happy. So it's more on learning a skill where you contribute towards society a little bit Although, yeah, it's basically, if you can do it, if you feel like you want to do it, then go ahead. Don't ever hesitate because hesitation will be your problem if you ever doubt yourself in the future. Don't ever think that, hey, I don't want to do it. I'm scared. I don't want to do this, do that. No, it's about challenging yourself. Will you go on that stage? Will you shine? And yes. That is one motto that I stand throughout my whole life. I was scared, I was worried, and that was my biggest mistake ever. 
Now I've thrown that fear away. I've thrown everything away. And here we are standing as, as someone that is more influenced, more mature, and a bit of contribution to the society. So that honestly is just my opinion. Thank you yes. a lot. Dan, All would right. you like to wrap this whole event up? Okay, I shall wrap this event. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, yeah. present to you now the presentation of e-certificates. Media team, please. <laughs> Thank you, media team. So we are now going to close the curtains for this webinar. So once again, I would like to thank every one of you that we want to thank the presenters and also the wonderful audiences. Without your presence, this webinar is will not be a very successful hit. To all of our media team and presenters, a very good job to all of you and may you continue to strive higher and succeed in your life ahead. Okay, guys, don't forget to claim your e-certificates as they can contribute to your PAGSP marks. We sincerely apologize if there are any technical issues towards this whole webinar. Once again, thank you everyone for your kind patience. On behalf of PPD Kota Kinabalu and SM All Saints Secondary School, we would like to thank the teacher advisors of each participating school and everyone present in this webinar today. To our lovely and beloved audiences, Thank you for your endless support. My name is Krishma Sharma. Have a spectacular evening, everyone. My name is Jian Wong. I am from SML Saints. We will see you in the future STEM is fun events to come. Stay safe and have a great day ahead. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Have a good day.